Hi, I'm Tom and in this video I'm going to be attempting to get my gas boiler details up on OpenEnergyMon's heatpumpmonitor.org. For those of you that don't know, heatpumpmonitor.org was set up by the team at OpenEnergyMon and it's essentially a way for heat pump owners and heat pump installers to share the, the details about their heat pump installations. So they're using uh, the data that's been gathered by the Open Energy Mon system. And if you so choose, you can simply apply to have your heat pump put onto this list. So it gives a little bit of information. So it'll tell you uh, whereabouts it's located. Uh, if the installer um, is listed, that will go up there. It'll tell you what training perhaps that the installer has had. So you can see like we've got the Heat Geek here or the Heating Academy Northampton. Tells you the type of heat pump it is, the make and model, the size, and then how long it's uh, the data, how long the data window is, and the COP that's coming out of that particular heat pump. You've also got um, you know, information, maybe they've done a YouTube video on it or a, a, a beta talk podcast episode about it. And then you can drill in and look at the individual detail. Now, they also group this data by different categories. So they've got this kind of top of the scops, which is the seasonal coefficient of performance. And that basically orders them by the scop, um, the highest obviously sitting at the, the top of the table. Um, they also then break it down to how much energy it, it, they're putting in per meter squared of the property, for example. And then they also have a list uh, that's done by cost. So you can see here they're paying 1.6p per kilowatt hour. Uh, and the kind of the highest is down here where they're paying 11p per kilowatt hour. Now inclusion on this list is entirely optional. As I've said, you essentially, once you've got your data up on Open Energy Mon, you can essentially submit a request to have your, your heat pump included in this list. So why would I be trying to get a gas boiler up on a heat pump website? Well, it all started with a tweet I received uh, over the weekend from the illustrious Mick Wall, who basically said, Tomas McGuinness has a heat meter on his gas boiler and he has Open Energy Mon and Shelly monitoring. I've met Mick at the Installer Show in 2023. He's a really great guy, uh, very generous with his time, so I, I have a lot of time for him. He's very helpful. But I couldn't help but think to myself, what has he kind of signed me up for? What's he gotten me into? So I dug into the tweet um, on Sunday, and essentially, uh, it started with a tweet from, from Rob, Rob Whitney, um, who works for Tepio and got a fast follow is about you know COP or SCOP not being the be all and end all which is something I quite agree with um, I'm more interested in the, the cost of uh, prices uh, the, the, the price per kilowatt or kilowatt hour for heating rather than a COP but the COP is very useful for comparison and essentially David Falcon then of Falcon Heating he came back and said oh why don't we just have a, a theoretical best boiler install up there as well so that you know it gives a uh, gives an even better baseline for people who might be considering heat pump because they can see well a heat pump is at 500 percent efficiency versus a boiler which might be at 80 or 90 percent efficiency uh rob then suggested well why don't we actually just get uh, one of these uh heating systems up on there and lynn hudson who uh basically is part of Open Energy Money. He's one of the founders. He said, well, we'd need somebody with a heat meter and the electrical monitoring and a smart meter. And Mick obviously follows along to, to, to my shenanigans with interest, uh, basically put me forward. I think he kind of volunteered me for this in a way, which I'm happy about. So I reached out to Dlyn um, and asked him what would be involved. I've got a heat meter installed in my system and I've done a video on that. I had that installed a few months ago. And then probably a, a couple of weeks ago, I installed a Shelly Plus PM Mini to monitor the electrical consumption of my uh, sort of heating system. So that's monitoring the, the consumption of the boiler and all the associated pumps and, and valves. And I've done a video on that as well. 
I also have an open energy mon, needless to say, I've done a video on that too. And that's just currently monitoring electricity. I've, I've got nothing else connected into it. I haven't really had the time to, to play around with it yet. So I've got a couple of clamps in there and I kind of loosely set up some monitoring. But none of the heat meter data is going into my open energy mon box and none of the uh, boiler electrical consumption data is going in either. So they're all managed separately. Uh, the heat meter has its own Raspberry Pi and that's logging directly to Home Assistant and the same for the Shelly uh, Plus Mini PM thing. That's also logging directly into Home Assistant. Glyn said, no problem, you can set up an integration within Home Assistant that will export that data across into Open Energy Mon as a set of uh, feeds. And once you've got those feeds set up, you can then put those feeds into the heat pump app that's inside the Open Energy Mon platform. So I'm gonna give that a go. I haven't done this before, but I had a quick look at the documentation and it's clear what I need to do. I'm not exactly sure how to do it, but I'm gonna give it a go. So if you follow along, I'm going to essentially set this all up with starting with Home Assistant and then I'll work through getting the data across into Open Energy Mon and then I'll figure out how to get that from Open Energy Mon into the heat pump app and then we can figure out how to get the heat pump data public. Now I realize it's not a heat pump, it's a gas boiler, but I'm hoping that once I've got the data exposed Glyn can do something to indicate that it's it's not a heat pump, that it's actually a boiler. I mean, technically there's a, on the dashboard itself, there is like a, a rating and a source. So I'm gonna leave all that to Glyn, he's the man to do that. And I'm just gonna focus on getting the data to him. So the first part is getting all the data I have from Home Assistant across into Open Energy Mon. Now there is a, integration um, provided by Open Energy Mon that's baked into Home Assistant that will essentially let me set up a whitelist of sensors. So I just need to give it a key, the URL to my instance, uh, an input node, no idea what that is yet, um, and then a whitelist of the sensors. So once you set this up, it looks like we'll just start, I guess, pushing all that data across into Open Energy Mon. And then from there, I'll be able to move that into a set of feeds. So if we take a look at the data I want to grab from Home Assistant. So here we've got the heat meter data. We've got the flow temperature, the return temperature and the power. So that will essentially provide the output of the boiler. I'm also tracking the power consumption. Um, and that's the electrical part. So that will be the pumps, as I mentioned, the power for the boiler and all the fans and pumps and everything that that uses. Um, I also do have other bits of data so I can grab the external temperature. And I think that's, I think that's all I kind of need for the minute. The main bits I need are the flow return, uh, the power. Oh, and I also need to get the smart meter data. Uh, so that will be the actual gas consumption being reported at the meter. So essentially once you know what the gas consumption is, you combine that with the power uh, which is the heat coming out of the boiler and that will essentially give you its coefficient of performance. So I'm expecting we'll put in one kilowatt hour of heat and get out 800 uh, kil watt hours of heat, giving me a COP of 0 0.8 or 80%. So I will now get that configuration uh, from here and I'll get that added into my home assistant setup. My home assistant is hosted in a Docker instance. I don't use any of the OS, it's sitting on a little PC. So I do everything through SSH uh, and I've actually paste that in and I've added in the five sensors which I think we need. So we've got the heat meter flow temperature, the heat meter return temperature, the heat meter power, the very poorly named central heating power and then the even more poorly named uh, GW which is my outdoor temperature sensor. I've done a video on that too unsurprisingly. Uh, so there are the four, five things that I believe I need uh, to populate enough data on the dashboard. So I haven't entered my key yet. I'm gonna keep that, that's, that's a little secret thing and I'll do that um, off camera. And then I'll restart Home Assistant and, and I'll jump into Emon and we'll see what it looks like. Much, much, much later. So after setting that up, 
uh, gave it a node ID of 20, which is one more than the 19 in the documentation. I now have all of my inputs coming in. So that worked surprisingly well. The, according to the documentation, uh, the Emon history will update once every 30 seconds. So we can kind of see that, that this little timer here will run up to 30 and then essentially reset back to zero. So we've got all our data coming in. I can even see some values. Uh, so we've got 3.6 watts, 9.3 degrees. Uh, the central heating is off at the moment, so the power is zero. So that all looks good. So on to the next step, which is now creating the feeds. So creating the feeds, I think is, well, it's not something I've done. So I believe what I can do is go into the settings here and then I can create a new feed. I'll create a new one. Uh, that's the node and it's got a fixed and we'll give it an interval of 30 seconds. I'll click add invalid characters in the feed name. So this must be the feed name. So we'll call this flow temperature. All right, uh, press to save, close that. So we've got a flow temperature. Now we'll do a few moments later. So if we now look at our feeds, we have our feeds here. There's no data in there for them. Um, so it just took a little bit of time to refresh. So now, the next step is creating the heat meter, uh, not the heat meter app, the heat pump app, or populating the heat pump app. So we jump up here to the apps. Um, I've already got one, which I've called my big ass spoiler. And now what we need to do is select some of these, uh, fill these values in. My camera is kind of in the way of these. So I'll just move the camera. Okay, so I'm now on the other side. So now we've got my heat pump, we'll call this, uh, I, I don't know, Tom's boiler, not sure. Um, now, electricity use in watts. Oh, I don't know how we're gonna work this out. All right, so flow temperature, that's easy. That's flow temperature, click OK. Return temperature, that's easy. It's return temperature. We've got heat pump outside temperature, so we've got our outdoor temperature. Um, now, so now we've got heat output, so that's fine. So that's going to be boiler power. I think that's measured in watts, well, we'll find out. Don't have cumulative heat output in kilowatt hours yet. And I'm not sure about the heat meter. So I'm going to need to go back to Glynn, I think, a little bit on this, because obviously I have electrical power but that's not really the same for a boiler. And I, I need to fill out the rest of this stuff. Yeah, I think it looks like I need to fill out the rest of this before I can launch it. So I'm gonna reach out to Glyn now and he can tell me, uh, and give me some advice on what I need to fill in for this. So whilst I was waiting for Glyn to come back to me, I decided I would just add some more data in. So I've pulled in uh, the rest of the data that I think is useful, or at least it's being looked for on the heat pump app. So I've added in the boiler heating temperature, so that's the desired flow temperature from the boiler. I've added in the call for hot water, the call for heating. Um, I've added in the average internal temperature. So that's essentially the room temperature. It, it aggregates uh, the temperatures of all the rooms in the house and gives you an average. And then I've also put in the flow rate, which I think is, it's used when it's calculating the power, but it's interesting to see by itself. So I've added all those in, and I think the, uh, the actual app itself also started to work. So what I reckoned is some of the data, it just didn't have enough in the time series, so it wasn't able to render. So that's rendering now. And I've also gone ahead and filled in the rest of the values. So for example, that's the internal temperature, the flow, the, the target flow temperature. So I've added, I've added all those uh, feeds into the app and it is actually producing some 
some data. I've also gone ahead and made it public. So what I will do now is reach out to Glyn and kind of tell him where I've gotten to, got all the data, I've made it public. And now he can kind of give me some advice on how we can get this up onto heat pump monitor. The next day. So Glyn reached out to me um, after a day or two of tricking around with, with this data and after having got the, uh, the data going into the heat pump app. Uh, set up a WhatsApp group between myself, himself and uh, Tristan Lee, which is another one of the co-founders of Open Energy Man. And we sort of worked through the problem of trying to figure out how to get the data across. What I didn't really understand was how my local instance related to the hosted instance of Open Energy Mon. So Glyn sort of explained how the feeds work and how he would need to be syncing the data back and forth. Given that that was some extra complexity and I would have needed uh, to set up a cron job and other bits and bobs on my own Raspberry Pi, my own kind of Emon base, we decided that it might be simpler if my home assistant just published the data directly. So I already had an account set up at emoncms.org, which I wasn't really using. So I was able to take the key and simply change the URL uh, for that. And that meant that my data now has been published directly to uh, the emoncms.org. So if we jump into Home Assistant, I'll show you the changes. So essentially, I've pointed the Emon CMS history integration out directly at emoncms.org using my key for my account up on the cloud. Um, same input node. And the only difference to the list of sensors is I've added now the smart meter gas import sensor. The gas import sensor is coming from my Glow HID, which is connected directly to my meters. So that's reading the values of my electricity and my gas meters, and it publishes that data onto MQTT, which is picked up by Home Assistant. And that's now sent directly to uh, Emon CMS. So with that data going up to uh, Emon CMS, the, the guys set about trying to put that, you know, make some sense of it and try to put it into um, the, the heat pump app. But we immediately ran into a problem with the actual gas meter reading. Now, when you've got a heat pump, the heat pump is using electricity and you can measure that electricity very easily by putting a CT clamp uh, onto your fuse board so you can see how much power is coming in. You can put a CT clamp onto the feed gun into your heat pump. So you, you can measure all that in near real time. But with a gas meter, you don't have the option to do that. Gas meters are battery powered so as a result, they only send their meter readings every 30 minutes. So your boiler could be on burning mountains and mountains of gas, but you won't actually get the result of that until 30 minutes later. That presented a problem because there's no way of getting the actual power uh, that the meter was reporting. We could only get essentially energy and we could only get that energy in 30 minute uh, chunks. But that little problem didn't stop them. So Tristan was able to set up a, a new dashboard or a new app within uh, Emon CMS. So if we have a look at it here, you can see all the available apps. And if we scroll down, you'll see the heat pump app is here. And if we scroll down a little further, you'll see there's a new My Boiler app. So here it is in all its glory. Um, we can see it's split out the boiler heat. It's got the boiler electric and then the flow and room temperatures, which I'm providing. The graph also shows the period of heating. It shows the flow and return temperatures, the outdoor temperature and the room temperature and the output from the boiler itself. So everything is kind of accounted for. And then since Tuesday evening, when we got this, uh, when we got all the feeds working, we can see that my boiler has been operating with an efficiency of 88%, which is good, I suppose. I don't think it's great. I was hoping it would be a lot higher with such a low uh, return temperature, but it does split out the electrical input and the total fuel inputs. In this case, this is gas. So it's working pretty well. I have to say I'm very impressed at how quickly uh, they were able to turn this around and get this thing set up. So 
A lot of toing and froing, lots of lessons learned about open energy man and how all of that works. So I've got a mountain of stuff now that I want to do in terms of uh, getting my local instance a lot more set up and maybe syncing a lot more of this data up to the cloud. So I'll wrap up there. A uh, big thank you to Dlin and Tristan, Open Energy Monitor, for helping me you know, get that data across and for creating that new app. I think I have the dubious honor of being the first gas boiler that's uh, being monitored by them. So uh, thanks to Mick for volunteering me. If you want to know more about Open Energy Monitor, you can head over to openenergymonitor.org. There's oodles and oodles of information on there. <clears throat> they also have a great community. Uh, people are very generous with their time and advice. So you'll, you can learn quite a lot and people are very happy to answer any questions. They also have a shop. So if you want to start your own uh, energy monitoring journey, everything you need is up there. If you found this video interesting, uh, please do like and subscribe. If you have any questions uh, on this or anything I've, I've done in this video, please use the comments. Again, I'll post a link to the dashboard so you can take a look um, and there'll be some links to the other videos that I referenced. And otherwise, that's it. I'm Tom and thanks for watching.